Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. I've been wanting to make a shadow box quilt. This is something that uses big squares and each one of the squares looks like it's casting a shadow onto the quilt behind it. So there's lots of different variations. You can do it with long pieces. You can do it with square pieces. So let's go over to the retail store and let's grab some nice fabrics and get this started. I haven't made this pattern before, so I've sketched out the size of the blocks and I will have this written up in a pattern so you can download it, but this is what I'm gonna work from. This is a great pattern if you have prints that have a larger scale and you don't wanna cut them up into little pieces. I'm going to use this bundle of one yard cuts from Moda called Gradients because the prints are interesting and big scale, but the pattern is written for 10 inch squares. So if you have a nice layer cake, the pattern will work for that as well. Now we need to pick out a fabric for the shadows. So I think a gray will be the best. So I'm gonna get a couple of these grays and we'll pull them out and see what they look like with the prints. If I had darker prints, I might even use a black shadow, but my prints are pretty light, so I think one of these will work. It's a little bit easier. Now let's see what these look like on these grays. This gray is quite a bit bluer, and that does make actually a pretty nice shadow. If we did them on here, it's a little bit duller. I don't like it quite as much. I think this bluish gray will be perfect. The only other thing we need is some solid white for the background so that our boxes and shadows can float on top of this. So grab your prints and let's get sewing. First thing I'm gonna do is take a look at these prints that came in the bundle. I may not use all five of them. This is a five yard bundle. And these are really nice. Love these prints. Very interesting textures. I just have the feeling that this one, while it matches really well, I think it's a little bit too intense. So I'm gonna save this one and use it either on the border or the binding. So I'm gonna iron these four prints up and cut them into 10 inch squares. Now the 10 inch squares, these are all cut. Now we need to cut the white and the shadow. So I've done all the calculations here. So out of the white, we just need to cut some strips. Some one and a halfs, a couple of 11s, and a couple of 12 and a halfs. I'm gonna need about two yards of this white and I'm gonna cut from my sketch, but don't worry about noticing what those sizes are, because we do have a free pattern that will give you all the cutting instructions. Put aside these one and a half inch strips, and then the 11 and 12 and a half, we're going to subcut those. We're gonna subcut them to two inches wide. So I'm just gonna turn my board, make a first cut here, and then cut everything two inches all the way across. Now for the gray, we just need two strips at nine inches and two strips at 10 inches. The cutting is all done. We've got our 10 inch squares, some whites, some long strips, some gray strips. Now we're gonna sew these strips onto the gray. So let's go over to the sewing machine. Stitch one of these little strips onto the edge of your shadow background here. Quarter inch seam, pretty small stitch length because we are going to cut this afterwards and just don't stretch anything, just stitch it right on the edge here. 
Now we're going to want to finger press this seam allowance toward the darker color. So pull this open a little bit and then either use your fingernail or just the pad of your finger and draw it right along that seam. When we finger press, it makes the ironing go much easier. So continue stitching one white strip onto one edge of each of your shadow strips. Now we want to steam press these. So I like to lay them flat on the board and pat that seam allowance back the direction it's supposed to go. Then take a straight edge. I like to use my ruler and make sure that you don't have it distorted. Make sure it's up against that straight edge. Get it nice and flat, then press it. Dry iron first works the best, then with some steam. Now that they're ironed, we can get ready to subcut them. I like to cut them all at the same time. So I laid the first strip set down with the line, the cut edge here on one of the lines of my board. Then I'm just layering the, these up and I'm staggering them a little bit so I don't get too much bulk where those seam allowances are. This way I can cut them all at the same time and it'll save me a lot of time. Just make sure that each one is laid on one of the straight lines. Now we're going to subcut these to one and a half inches and look how fast we'll get the patchwork done. We'll get that messy stuff off the edge there, but when we make this first cut here, we have the shadow strip with the little piece on the end already done. So we will have these in bulk. And this is why we did really small stitch length here because we don't want that coming apart. So we wanted a lot of stitches there. The blocks are really easy to stitch up now that we've got these guys done. So each block gets one of each size. So I'm gonna make one entire block first, then I'll show you how to chain piece them for speed. So let's leave one block there and move these out of the way. We're gonna start with this guy and put that on and put the white and then put the white. This is the exact length that it needs to be here. So just use a careful quarter inch seam and press toward the block. So the seam allowance is going toward your big block. This piece fits here, fits exact, same procedure. Again, press toward the block. And now we'll add this white piece down here. We're going to finger press this again toward that darker shadow print there, or shadow gray. Then add this white piece here. That block is done. Now every block is going to be made exactly like this. So instead of making them block at a time, I'm going to chain piece. I'm going to take this piece and the block and I'm going to sew the whole stack of them like that. The blocks are all stitched up, so I'm going to lay these out and we will start to see that shadow effect. You don't really get the whole shadow until you get a lot of the blocks laid out. So I think I'm just going to lay them out at random. I'm not going to do any particular pattern, but I'm going to have five blocks wide and seven blocks tall. I'm just trading some of the blocks around and trying to get the pattern balanced. Since I only have four prints, it's important to have them look random, but make sure the colors are balanced. So I want to have the pink spread out and I want to have these dots spread out but I don't want it to be too matchy matchy I want it to be somewhat random so I'm going to check it from several angles sometimes I will even get my tall chair 
This really helps. Get a big, big view from way far away. Maybe take a picture. I think this is pretty balanced now, so I'm ready to sew the rows together. Here's one way I use to keep my blocks organized. I will put a pin into the end block of every row here, and then I will know that this is the row that's down on the end of the quilt. Once I have a pin in all of these blocks, I'm gonna pick up one row in order, not twisting the blocks, and then I will stitch these up, and then I will know that this block here with the pin is the one that's gonna go down on that end. Since the blocks are in order here, I've got them set on my lap. That's the first block. Here's the next block. So I'm going to stitch them together and then finger press that seam allowance towards the darker color. Got to check where my seam allowance is going there in the back. We want to make sure those lay flat. Now open this up and make sure that seam allowance is pressed toward the darker print here. So keep adding rows till you have the whole row done. And then I like to iron this one row, set it back on the table, and then grab the next row. With the rows all stitched together now, you can start to see that shadow very nicely. And because we stitched the white onto the side and the bottom of every square, that effectively makes our sashing that goes between all the squares. The only thing we have to add now is a little bit of white to this side and to the top. We need to cut four pieces at two inches, and that will be enough to border the last two sides of the quilt. I have those last two borders on the quilt, and it's all loaded up here. So now I need to pick a thread color. I thought I was gonna use this light pink. It won't show much in the white areas, but I could use white. That won't show it all in the white areas. Hmm. I really do think pink is gonna look the best. Let's go with the pink. I'm using a pattern called Deb's Swirls. It's kind of swirly and pointy. It's fairly even. So I think that will look good on this pattern. It's not gonna show much but this will not take away from the patchwork. So it's ready to start here. So the machine is coming over now and it will stop right where it wants to start the first row. Here's the finished quilt. Now you can see the shadows much better. You always have to wait till the quilt is almost all the way done before you can really see the pattern come out. So the blocks look like they're floating. They look like they're raised up a little. And that touch of a shadow just gives the whole quilt dimension. I really like how these big patterns did not get broken up into little itty bitty pieces. The quilting, it's swirly, but it's understated and it looks really good. I used that one last yard we had left over for the binding, because that print, it was kind of dark, but it looks really good on the binding. So I used five one yard cuts, but again, you could use a layer cake for these patterns. It turned out 60 by 83, so it's a generous sized throw. Hi everyone, thank you very much for watching our shadow box tutorial today. We're gonna be having another giveaway. We're gonna give away three wall hangings. This is one of them we're going to give away. It is a beautiful carpenter's wheel made out of batiks. I like this one a lot, Donna. What have you got there? I have a Lone Star. It's made with Moda fabrics from the Biscuits and Gravy collection. Well, I'm liking that one. And how about this one, Donna? This is beautiful too. What's the name of this one, Donna? This is different. It's Evening Star. Evening Star. Hexagon shaped, Christmas prints. That's nice. Really That's fun. That's really nice. It's very easy to enter the giveaway. Just click the link below that says giveaway, enter your name and email address. And remember, you have three chances to win and the items can be shipped worldwide. Now, if you don't wanna miss any of our tutorials, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.
Thanks, everybody, and happy quilting.